I get asked all the time, how do we record and produce Merge Conflict or any of my other podcasts? So today what I want to do is I want to break down from start to finish how we record, how I edit, and how I produce the podcast using free open source tools and some really awesome software that can be completely for free. So check it out. All right, so now I'm in podcast editing mode. I am seated. This is sort of my jam. I normally don't have lights on. I normally am editing completely in the dark. But today for you, I am going to break down how I'm editing the latest Merge Conflict podcast. All right, so I want to walk through a few pieces of software that we use to produce and edit and publish Merge Conflict. So Merge Conflict here is... um, actually on a podcast host called fireside.fm. Uh, Dan Benjamin, longtime podcaster, um, ha- created Fireside back in 2016. And this is what we use. We've moved around. We were on a few different platforms before Fireside, but we really like Fireside. Uh, it's a good deal. It has a lot of support for importing and transferring in all of your different podcasts. And it makes a pretty nice website too. It has uh, episodes, search, guests, sponsors, Patreon links, subscribe links, all that good stuff. And you get, of course, all the integrations that you would possibly suspect basically here. And of course, you get all of your RSS and and all that stuff built right in. So that's what we're going to do. Now, to actually record the podcast, we use a service called Zencaster. Uh, This is a pretty cool service that's been around for a long time. Now, don't be confused by this, what you see here with some of the developers and the team. They do audio recordings as well as video recordings. The video recordings are a newer offering from Zencaster. Uh, We do have used them in the past, but mostly we just produce just audio. But it's quite cool. There's a whole bunch of different podcasts that are produced with Zencaster. It's very nice because it's really easy to give a link away and simply get people hopping on and recording a podcast with you. Frank and I have used it since the very beginning, I think 200 and some odd uh, podcasts. Uh, that we've done with it. Now, there is different pricing with Zencaster. Um, we're on the free hobbyist here, actually, but we pay for um, audio and video mixing separately that's out there. So this is actually really nice. There's a lot of things that you can just get going with. Um, at one point, we do do the professional, but just we didn't need completely um, more, more things. So we just use the free hobbyist here and, and boom, we were good to go. So I love the pricing on here. Of course you can pay yearly or monthly as well. If you do, um, amp that up, but again, we just pay for the audio mixing separately. And I'll walk through that here in a second. So when Frank and I hop on over here to Zencaster, uh, what we'll notice is that, um, this was, a, this was the recording. I normally would see Frank on here and we would record and then we'd edit the podcast. We then upload our MP3s to Zencaster's backend, and then I'm able to do automatic post-production on it. So if I tap on this automatic post-production, I can tap on the two people's names, go to advanced, and it automatically will levelize the differences between my tracks. So if Frank is really, really close to his pot his microphone during the podcast, that's great. Uh, noise gate will go ahead and detect background noise and remove that. We don't do cross gate that sort of automatically detects if someone was to speak over somebody else, it would decrease someone else's audio. I'm not a big fan of that, but I do tap on the separate wave file tracks. Now I'm actually in classic Zencaster mode because Sometimes in the new version, they just haven't rolled this this new feature out to separate wave tracks at the end. Um, because when you run post production here, it'll combine them into a single track. But we're going to do cleanup on it. Like we're not just going to uh, magically assume that Zencaster is the perfect piece of software that knows exactly what we said in the podcast and what to trim. So I like to have a separate audio track for Frank and a separate audio track for me. But they'll already be levelized. The noise gate will already go ahead and uh, take effect. Now, I just use the default here, podcast and mobile, the the loofs. I don't even know what that is, whatever. It's just the loudness target that they have. So if there's a lot of um, noise, I guess, I know it's in there. And I run that and then it it automatically post produces it. You can see I paid for a bunch of hours and then that uploads to Dropbox for me. And that's it. We have all the recordings on the left-hand side and we're good to go. 
Now, unfortunately, I would like to use OneDrive or even my Google Drive, but they only support Dropbox, so I have to use Dropbox. Now, beyond that, there's a few other pieces of software that we use to actually edit the podcast. So first is Audacity. Yes, it's all, everything's made in Audacity. It's free. It's open source. It's Audacity. It's I've just used it forever, um, and it just works. And it works on Mac. It works on Windows. And I don't know. It just it's Audacity. It is what it is. I do have one other um, purchase that I've made over the years, which is this Era from Acusonus. Uh, what's cool about this is that the Era bundle has a bunch of plugins to Audacity and to other pieces of software. And it does things like noise remover, uh, voice deepener, there's a mouth declicker, there's uh, auto EQ, voice levelizer. This one's really cool, the reverb rem remover. I like this a lot um, because what it'll do is automatically get rid of some of the reverb in the background. Let's see if it does this here. Reverb is the unavoidable result of room acoustics. It's the sound of empty space that you inevitably. And, and I, I needed this originally too, because my office was, was pretty empty. Now I have noise dampeners and stuff, but this is pretty cool. We get when you record in large or untreated rooms. With era reverb remover, you can easily fix an echoey and hollow recording to make it sound tight and focused. It's a one button solution that simply works. Let's hear it in action. Hey y'all, just a mini update. In my upcoming videos about African nations, we will discuss Chad. That's pretty amazing. And it does work really, really well. Use it in all sorts of our podcasts. So those are the only things I use, um, which are cool there to actually edit. And the, one other thing we do is we have transcripts for our podcast and I use Descript over there to do that. Descript is all sorts of things all in one. It's crazy. I use 1% of it. Um, most of these tools, my good buddy, John Galloway showed me how to use. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, what we'll see first is I have this folder as we can see here, and this is every single podcast of Emerge conflict over here. So from the very beginning, all the way up, up to here. Now, the first thing I do as on my computer is I'm going to pause syncing of OneDrive. There we go. There's some video files. I don't like to edit and upload to OneDrive. It's in my OneDrive automatically. So the first thing I do is I'm going to come and create a new folder, episode 263. And then I have a template and I spent a little bit of time on the short opening template. It's nothing special, uh, but I basically just copy and paste it around. So I'm just going to go and paste it there and then I'm just going to open it. So I just open up audacity and this will have my template that's inside of it. So let me go ahead and make it the correct size here. There we go. So this is it. This is the template. It's one track. Actually, it's really nothing special. It has our intro and outro music automatically in here. So there's the intro and there's the outro and I can go ahead and make it a little bit smaller and I should update the template just to make this, um, multiple uh, areas where I can move them around since our podcasts are not always the same length. Um, but basically it's just silent in the middle and there's some intro music and then there's some outro music. And that's it pretty much. Um, but. I wanted to make sure that I had the intro and outro music the exact same every single time so I didn't have to mess around with it. So it's my template that I have. Now, Audacity here, uh, it's really just a few buttons up here that I use. Uh, this one here is to select a specific piece of track. So if I want to mute something or I want to delete something, I do that here. I showed you the, the move around. So if there's a segment, you can move it around, which is nice. Uh, I don't use any of these other buttons at all. I would say the only other one I use is this one right here, which is silence audio section. So for example, if I wanted to come in and say, now I'm recording some audio at the very end of this. And if I go ahead and zoom in here and stop it, we'll see, I've recorded this little bit of audio over here. Um, and in fact, that's a separate, separate track, but what you can do is you can highlight something just like this and then do that. So if Frank talks over me or I talk over Frank, I can automatically um, do that. Let's delete it there. And this is one track of the uh, podcast. So we got to get the other uh, audio track. So I'm going to go into my download folder here and I'm just going to extract this here. This is the multiple wave files that were given to me earlier. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop these in to audacity. All right. So now what we're going to do is 
look at the track. So we have two tracks over here. Uh, track one, this is probably me. Hey, it's very modular. It's very nice. That's me. There we go. And then on the bottom over here, if I just zoom in, so I'm holding down control and just scrolling in with my scroll wheel. You could also zoom in and zoom out up here too. Um, but what we're going to do is just look here. This would be Frank smart here, but I had no idea. There's Frank. So the first thing I do is I just simply align this. There we go. So I just kind of move these two. So like it fades down. Frank, I just installed a TP. Perfect. That's great. Now at this point, the podcast is almost, almost done. I don't know. Oh, we do something that's called live to tape. So when Frank and I record a podcast, what it means is pretty much 99% of the time, if we record it, it is in the podcast. The only editing I really do is a quick scrubbing to see if there's any overlap or things that went awry in the podcast. So, um, that's all I really need to do. So for example, you know, I can see that there's like a little bit of noise here and I could, you know, remove this and I can sort of see if things align. Yeah, I, that's, cool. uh, that's good. Uh, you know, and I could go ahead and delete this. Yeah, I, uh, my, I could delete the, uh, for example, and some people do that. Some people will really zoom in I, uh, my, and they'll come in they'll say, okay, I'm going to delete these two and select both tracks, hit delete. And then, yeah, I, my good friend Scott Hanselman. In fact, I could just say like, you know what? Like that whole thing, I could just delete all that right now. That's my good friend Scott Hanselman. You know, I, I could leave that in there. I could not, I'm just gonna leave it all in there. Some people go really granular and they remove every single word as they're doing the podcast by me. Nah, not really. Ding. Uh, sent to you. Uh, so that's good. At some point, Ooh. but. I was like, Scott, just so that's good. And now all I'm going to do is just kind of scrub through and I'm just going to scrub through and say, you know, is there points in times that we overlapped? I'm 2.0. Uh, oh, so here, for example, like, that's a probably good one that I could probably delete that it look like it, it, if I really wanted to get nitpicky here. What I would do is I would remove some of this just tiny bit of, of just blank, empty space there by half an inch wide. Okay. See that? See, yeah, that's, that's kind of annoying that, you know, we had a little bit of gap there. Not the worst, but I'll just kind of scrub through. I'm just doing it by eye. Motherboard directly. There's, there's holes. Yeah. So here, that's a good one. We had some overlap there. Not a big deal. Is that what you're saying? There were. So that's good. Let's see here. Like where it's Is under. A... So, sorry. Yeah, here we go. Again, delete that. So there's a few parts where maybe we overlap and you just want to kind of clean those up and you put yeah. like the reset button and the power uh, button and all those things. Uh, it's like that. always that's good. So then I'll kind of scrub through. It depends how I'm feeling too. If I'm like, eh, wheelie mm -hmm. cart. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Uh, you, I ended you up rounded yourself. You... Yeah. Maybe here, like I'll mute this a little bit, but my whole plan is really to never spend more than 10 to 15 minutes editing a podcast and up. You're going to hate me. I opened up. All right, that's good. So as I'll kind of go through this, I'll just do this. So this probably isn't worth your time uh, to watch me edit every little piece here. So what I'm going to do here at about minute, whatever, 13 that we're in on this, I'm just going to fast forward and I'll talk through some of the things that I'm doing here uh, in a second. So let's take a look here. All right, so now I'm sort of at the end of the podcast here, and I'm just going to align sort of the, the outro music. Just make sure we don't overlap at all. Send me your suggestions. Probably That's a 1070. Good. I'm James Montemagno. And I'm Frank Krueger. Thanks for listening. Jeez. All right, cool. So we're pretty much good there. Now, the other, other thing I like to do is, for some reason, Frank has like a lot of things around him. So he normally has no issues. But let's say I did want to run like reverb removes remover i can like to do what should he spend his hard earn and kind of like see what it looks like but i can double tap the entire track effect and when you're in audacity you can do all sorts of stuff so actually you can do like fade in fade out um reversals crossfade limiters you can do a lot of stuff noise gates you can do a noise remover too you can do a lot of things that zencaster was doing but for consistency i just let zencaster do all of it but i used to use a lot of these tools built in but now i just don't so here's the reverb remover and that brings that up and you can kind of preview it in real time do what should he spend his hard-earned dollars on 
I think a 10 seven, he already has it. And he could then go out and put that into a high yield savings account. And then, you know, 10 years from now, he could buy two tenths. Yeah, I would do like a little bit, I guess. You know, I, I still think that there's a little bit of echo in my room. So I'm sort of on that. Yeah, I'll just add a tiny little bit here. This does sort of adjust some of the audio quality a little bit, but it does such a great job. Okay, cool. So now at this point, uh, it's done. I edited the podcast. Um, I'm actually looking at my time and I don't know, like five, 10 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and export this uh, to a WAV file. And I'm going to go ahead and just save it up into episode 263. And I call it Merge Conflict 263. They're all the same exact name. They're all there. So here's a, a few important things that I do when I export this. The first is that I do a bitrate mode is constant. Uh, quality mode is 128 kilobytes. Uh, if you go too high, then you know your users are gonna have huge downloads. If you go too low, it may not sound super good. Some people use 96, some people use 64. I like 128. If you have a really long podcast, you may wanna bring it down to 96, but we're, our podcaster was about 30 to 60 minutes, so that we're there. And then I always do force export to mono. That's really important. A lot of people, when they listen to podcasts, uh, they're audio, they're not music. So music would normally be joint. Uh, so you have things come out of your left ear and right ear, but there's nothing worse than if someone is talking and you're picking up more audio on the right or the left side. I go on dog walks on the morning with my dog and I only put in one earbud so I can hear the world around me. And if I didn't force it to mono, I wouldn't be able to hear all the things on one side. So I export it here, bup, 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 hit this. I then come into this uh, metadata and always clear it out. Fireside adds all that for me, so I don't really have to worry about it at all. So at this point now, I'm processing my MP3. This is gonna be my final uh, exported audio track that I'm gonna upload to Fireside uh, and we'll kind of be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this folder. A lot of things are gonna happen here. You're gonna see it's gonna start to sort of come in in real time. Uh, over here. So let me go ahead and bring this over and it is done. All right. And I don't even really listen to it back, but I totally can. Let's see. Sounds perfect. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start uploading stuff all over the place. The first thing I do is I come into my fireside where here's all my podcasts. I select merge conflict, say new episode public. This is going to go out on July 20, 19th, 19th at midnight Pacific, we put it out. 263 is the slug. My title is 263. I'll make this a little bit bigger here as well. And this will be building computers. And I'll say Frank, Frank and I decided to build and upgrade our computers. How did we decide what to build and what are we building them for? Question mark. And then the nice thing about Fireside, it has a bunch of these defaults automatically set in. So all the follow us, review us, all that stuff's there. So I can do like computer, build, uh, mobile, Xamarin, desktop, uh, Linux, Windows. And I'll just put some tags, some keywords. Frank and James, that's us. And then I'm going to create the episode. And then I'm going to go ahead and upload the track. This will be in 263. 263. That will upload. Bop, 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 bop. Very cool. And then also we have the ability to upload a transcript, episode artwork if I didn't want the default, and then a custom header image. I pretty much always add that. That'll be something like building a computer. I also come over into our Patreon, create a new post, new. All of our Patreon subscribers get our audio early. So I'll say 263, building computers. Paste that in there. Actually, I don't even usually add anything in there. I'll say podcast, upload 263. That's going to upload. We'll be good to go there. Then what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to go into Descript. This is a great little um, application. And what this is going to do, if I minimize this down here, is I'm going to say add a new composition. And then I'm going to drag and drop that MP3 right into there. Boom. Now, new composition, what that's going to do for us is it's going to um, it's going to do audio transcripts. So our podcasts are accessible 
uh, there. So I'll say here, your transcript will be ready in a few minutes. I'm going to say detect speakers. There's going to be two of them and I'll say done. So this is actually really, really neat. One of my favorite parts of the process because Descript can do all sorts of stuff. I'll, I'll show you some of the features, but mostly I just, we just use it for transcript. So it's going to upload it. It's going to do a bunch of stuff over here and then it's going to transcribe it. So let's go ahead and go up to our fireside. It's uploading. I don't have the fastest upload, unfortunately. So it is kind of a bummer, especially when I'm doing YouTube videos, same thing with Patreon. It's like uploading, something is happening. Who knows? Slow, but sure. And of course I'm uploading all of these at the same time, but I do it just because I, I don't know. I just, I just want them to be kind of, kind of all up there and done. So let's see if they're going to go ahead and go through and watch bars go through over here and it's going to upload, upload. I probably should have only done like one of them at a time, but you know, this is a real world of, of exactly how I edit and produce this podcast. So it's all happening. Uh, same thing here. This is uploading in real time to the back end. So let's see here. Let's give it a few seconds as they go. All right. So the podcast is uploaded. I also posted the Patreon and let's see if this is done. It is. So now what's cool here is we can do to identify speakers. So it's actually transcribing the file still, which is pretty neat. And uh, we'll say get started. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't That's know. Frank? Like, uh... Yeah, I, uh, my good friend Scott Hanselman. That's me. And yeah, so now it's actually transcribing the entirety of the audio and it's going to put it in this file. And you can see we've done every single podcast. I don't know when we started doing it necessarily, but at least a few hundred episodes back. And we, um, it was one of the tiers for our Patreon subscribers for us to go ahead and, and, and bring the transcriptions uh, in line, which is good. This usually takes us a few minutes, uh, which is really impressive. So it uploads, transcribes, it brings it back. And here we go. Uh, and I just, I don't even read it. I just mostly just let it go. They're machine translated, they're fine. Uh, but you can actually do really cool things here. Like you can uh, actually do share and you can export and you can do um, like an audiogram, which is cool. And it'll do like a little audiogram thing for different audio that you select. But all we do is we go in, export it, and say uh, file export to text. You can also do things inside of here like subtitles for YouTube, which is pretty cool. If I just do text, export, I put it in the 263 folder, boom, open it up. I open this up in Word. There it is. That's what it looks like. So it has the audio transcriptions here, which is really nice. And then I do file, I do export. You can see what I've done, all of the merge conflicts. Export, change file type, plain text, save as. It's probably an easier way to do this, but this is how I do it. Save it, close it. Uh, I wish it just did text, but it doesn't. And we're done. I can now close this because we're done. And all I got to do now is come over to my podcast one more time and then put in the transcript and upload it. And we're done. Um, I could go in and, and do the episode header. That would be sort of the next natural step. If I had sponsors, I would add sponsors in here. If I had chapters, I could add chapters in here. I'm a little bit lazy, so I don't add very many things. I could add links if I had links, um, but mostly I've just been adding details here. And of course I could add all sorts of different information inside of here, but it's up on Patreon. It's up and ready to go live if I go to my episodes. It is pending for July 19th. That's right here, which is super cool. And that's really it. Um, if I want to take a look and preview it, I can see it right here. I can play it back. I can share it and we're good to go. So that's it. Fireside FM for all my podcast hosting. Check them out. Their pricing is pretty solid. I don't know where their pricing tier is. Where's is it at? Down here somewhere? Here it is. 19 bucks a month that gives you unlimited podcasts, um, one included, and you can add more podcasts, um, for $8 unlimited episodes, 75,000 downloads per month, all sorts of good stuff there, or there's a pro plan too. Uh, and there's a starter. If you have one podcast, nine bucks a month, that's not bad. Uh, over here, you have Zencaster. You can do that completely for free. If you want to do the audio processing yourself, you can do it inside of audacity or pay for it in Zencaster. And of course, like I said, I use the era bundle there. I'll put all of the different links of different software that I use in the 
description below. There you have it. We just edited an entire podcast from start to finish. Hope that you did kind of enjoy this little breakdown of every little bit. Uh, a lot of people have been asking for me, so I decided to do it. Well, there you have it from start to finish, how I and Frank set up Merge Conflict every single week, how we record it, how I produce it and edit it, and how I upload it to Fireside FM. Hope that you enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more of how I do things, uh, let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, smash that like button down there. That goes into the YouTube algorithm of goodness and really helps out me and the channel. And of course, if you wanna see more content, don't forget to subscribe and ding that notification bell. Become part of the notification squad so you get updates every single time I put out a new video right here on my channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good one.